A spacecraft in an elliptical orbit. Consider a spacecraft in an elliptical orbit around the Earth. At the low point or perigee of its orbit, it is HP equals 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface and at the high point or apogee, it is HA equals 4000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Part A, what is the period of the spacecraft's orbit? Okay, now if we have a circular orbit, not an elliptical orbit, the gravitational force uh, between this object and the, uh, mass, uh, the Earth is the gravitational constant g, mass of the spacecraft, m, multiplied by mass of the Earth, divided by the distance between the centers, squared. And this is a centripetal force for... Uh, uniform circular motion. So this is going to be equal to m v square over r. And we can see that these m's disappear and one of the r's disappear. And we obtain uh, v square on the right side. But what is v in uniform circular motion? It is the constant speed, which is 2 pi times the orbit radius divided by the period squared, that's v squared. So we find that uh, g times mass of the Earth divided by r is 4 pi square r square divided by the period square for the circular orbit. So we find that the period is um, 2 pi r to the power 3 over 2 divided by g times mass of the earth in square root. Now, this is the Kepler's third law for uh, circular orbits. For elliptical orbits, what do we do? For elliptical orbits, the radius r is replaced by a, the semi-major axis. All right. And uh, this result is known as Kepler's third law. Now, if I look at uh, this elliptical orbit, semi-major axis is A, semi-minor axis is B, and here is our spacecraft at the closest possible uh, radial distance with respect to the Earth, Rp. Uh, this is called the perigee configuration, and if we are at the farthest possible distance with respect to the Earth, that is called the apogee configuration. You can see that Ra plus Rp is equal to twice the semi-major axis A. All right, so uh, we can write this 2A equals rp perigee distance radial distance plus apogee per, uh, radial distance what is the perigee radial distance it is the radius of the earth plus the uh, altitude with respect to the surface of the earth at the perigee hp and for the apogee distance we have the radius of the earth plus the altitude above the Earth's surface, HA. So this is going to become 2RE plus HP plus HA. And therefore, we see that the semi-major axis, A, is equal to the radius of the Earth plus HP plus HA divided by 2. So... Uh, substituting this result to Kepler's third law, the period of this orbit will be 2 pi uh, 
what was our result? 2 pi r to the power 3 over 2. So it is 2 pi uh, radius of the earth plus hp plus ha hp plus ha divided by 2 to the power 3 over 2. So remember that for elliptical or orbits r is equal to a semi-major axis. And uh, then we have this factor 1 over square root gme. So we, we have to multiply this by 1 over square root gme. And that's the symbolic answer for the period. Now if you want to find the numerical answer, we have to note that the radius of the Earth is 6,370 kilometers roughly. Mass of the Earth is 5.97 10 to 24 kilograms. The universal gravitational constant G is 6.67 times 10 to minus 11 Newton meter square divided by kilogram square. The value of HP given in the problem statement is 400 uh, kilometers. The value of HA given in the problem statement is 4000 kilometers. So uh, substituting these numbers, we can calculate the semi-major axis. A is equal to 6,370 kilometers, 6.370, 10 to 6 meters, plus uh, H, A, 4,000 kilometers, 4 times 10 to 5 meters, uh, plus... 400 kilometers, that's HP, and for HA we have 4,000 kilometers, 4 times 10 to 6 meters, divided by 2. This gives me 6.37 10 to 6 plus 2 10 to 5 plus 2 10 to 6, a value for the semi-major axis, 8.5. 5, 7 times 10 to 6 meters. And as for the period of the orbit, we have 2 pi a to the power 3 over 2. So it is 8.57 times 10 to 6 to the power 3 over 2, 1 over square root gme, which is 1 over 6.67 10 to minus 11 times 5.97 10 to 24 in square root. And this gives us a period of 7.90 times 10 to 3 seconds. So that's the answer to part A of the problem. Part B, uh, using conservation of angular momentum, find the ratio of the spacecraft speed at the perigee to its speed at the apogee. Now, first of all, why is the angular momentum conserved in this system? Because there is no external torque. Remember that uh, the net external torque is equal to dL dt. dL dt is zero, so that the angular momentum should be conserved. Uh, now, the angular momentum is r cross mv. Torque is r cross f, which is r cross ma, which is dL dt, remember. So, it, since we don't have any external torque, the angular momentum of the system is a constant. And we have a angular momentum at the apogee, the radial distance are a m v a r cross m v and r and m v are perpendicular to each other and this must be equal to the angular momentum at the perigee lp which is r p m v p uh, so we we note that the angular momentum is r cross m v and the net external 
torque acting on the system is dl total dt which is r cross ma okay and this is equal to zero in this case so that the angular momentum is a constant so this gives us the following relationship uh, r a v a is equal to r p v p in other words the ratio uh, of the speed at the perigee to the speed at the apogee is related to um, vp over va is ra over rp okay so what is ra the apogee distance it's the radius of the earth plus the altitude at the apogee uh, what is the perigee radial distance radius of the earth plus the altitude with respect to the surface apogee so we find that this ratio of the speeds at the perigee to the apogee vp to va ratio must be equal to uh, ra which is radius of the earth plus ha and rp which is radius of the earth plus hp if i substitute the numbers for this uh, vp over va ratio becomes uh, 6.37 10 to 6 meters radius of the earth plus 4 times 10 to 6 meters that's the apogee 4000 kilometers 6.37 10 to 6 meters radius of the earth plus 4 times 10 to 5 that is the perigee distance 400 kilometers this gives me an end result for the ratio vp over va equals 1.53 we will leave part C and part D for the next video. So in this video, we talked about the spacecraft in the elliptical orbit, which has uh, a, at its lowest point with respect to the Earth or perigee, uh, an altitude of 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface and at the apogee, largest possible radial distance, 4,000 kilometers. We want to know the period and we want to use conservation of angular momentum to find the ratio of the speed at perigee to that of apogee. So first I have noted for a circular orbit, the gravitational force is the centripetal force, which is mass times centripetal acceleration, where the speed of the uh, constant speed of the motion is 2 pi r divided by the period, the circumference divided by the period. So substituting 2 pi r over t for v, we find that the period is related to the radius of the circular orbit, 2 pi r to the power 3 over 2 square root g me. Now, for elliptical orbits, we replace this r radius with a, the semi-major axis, that's Kepler's third law, and we note that uh, the semi-major axis uh, two, uh, uh, is equal to A. It's related to the perigee and apogee uh, radial distances as RP plus RA. But what is RP and what is RA? RP is radius of the Earth plus the altitude with respect to the surface of the Earth at the perigee. And RA is radius of the Earth plus the altitude with respect to the surface of the Earth at the apogee. So... Uh, we note that 2a is equal to 2re plus hp plus ha, so we can calculate the semi-major axis as radius of the earth plus uh, the uh, average of the distances at the perigee and apogee with respect to the surface of the earth. So uh, substituting this for a into our Kepler's third law, so this is a to the power 3 over 2 for circular orbits, we obtain our uh, symbolic answer. If we substitute the numbers here, we obtain 7.9 10 to 3 seconds. 
Now in part B, the problem statement says we have conservation of angular momentum. Why do we have conservation of angular momentum? There is no external torque acting on the system of the Earth and the spacecraft, which is dl dt. dl dt zero implies that the angular momentum is a constant. Uh, and for this uh, r cross mv, we have r cross mv, r cross mv. They are perpendicular to each other. So you can note here that this is the uh, speed uh, vp uh, at this point, And this is the speed va at this point. And the velocities are perpendicular to the uh, radial distances, radial vectors. Therefore, uh, we find that R cross MV is RMV. RA MVA is equal to RP MVP. And substituting for RA, the radius of the Earth plus the altitude at the apogee, for RP, radius of the Earth plus the altitude at the perigee, we obtain the ratio VP over VA equals RA over RP, which is R, uh, because these M's cancel here, uh, we obtain Re plus HA divided by Re plus HB. So substituting the numbers, we find that uh, Vp is 1.53 times greater than Va. So when the uh, spacecraft gets closer to the Earth, it speeds up. So you can see Vp is about 53% greater than the, its speed at the apogee. So it slows down here and then it speeds up here. 